Hi, everybody. Welcome to No Story is Sacred. We are four siblings who are raised by working freelance authors. And when you have a big family with two parents who are full-time writers, the craft of writing basically becomes a family business. We grew up talking about the art of storytelling. Now that we're adults, we're still talking about it, and we're inviting you to join the conversation. My name is Kat, and I'm the oldest. I'm Brendan, right in the middle. I'm Pippin, and I'm the older twin. I'm Alex, the youngest. Today, we're talking about Star Trek Into Darkness. So, spoilers and content warnings. For those of you who either haven't seen the movie or need reminding what it's about, Amazon's summary is... When the crew of the Enterprise is called back home, they find an unstoppable force of terror from within their own organization has detonated the fleet and everything is... I don't agree with a lot of this summary, by the way. Neither do I. Has detonated the fleet and everything it stands for, leaving our world in a state of crisis. With a personal score to settle, Captain Kirk leads a manhunt to a war zone world to capture a one-man weapon of mass destruction. As our heroes are propelled into an epic chess game of life and death, love will be challenged, friendships will be torn apart, and sacrifices must be made for the only family Kirk has left. His crew. <laughs> what What movie did the Amazon synopsis writer watch? Cause... I suspect a better movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah. here's the thing. Just, I... Even just pulling that apart. Yeah, I mean, well, the thing is, like, I, I tried to find a different summary. I went to IMDb's. IMDb's was somehow worse. It, uh, <laughs> I, I wow. genuinely think that this is what people thought the movie was about, which is horrifying because that's not what happened. <laughs> it would have been better. I agree. There was no chess game. There was no one yeah. man, one man me- weapon of mass destruction. I'm sorry. Yeah. Manhunt was- is a bit of a broad interpretation. <laughs> Yeah. A, a loose interpretation. A war zone world. I see that would have been cooler than what they had. Five minutes on Kronos. No, no, not even no, on it wasn't, Kronos. Even we, at war with Kronos yet. We saw some Klingons, and then they got shot. <laughs> <laughs> the Klingons were there, and then they were not. Um, and they had like, I'm sorry, I don't know if I'm the only one who. And I'm sorry, I turned this blue so early on. Am I the only one who thought they had, like, just these enormous cock rings on their faces? Ooh. Just me? Okay. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I'm like, why, why is why this the Prince this? Albert look? <laughs> so. Because they're Klingons. They have to be edgy. Okay, so. Uh, everything has to be edgy. A little bit. Romulans have to be edgy. The only ones that don't have to be edgy are the Vulcans, because everyone knows that, well, one, everyone knows that they're total stuck up. Vulcans are fucking wild. <laughs> and two... If you try to mess around with Spock, people would throw their hands up in the air like they just didn't care, but in a bad way. Because <laughs> they care too much. Too much. But everybody too else so, has to be so cool. I don't know. So I almost wonder, by the way, I wonder if this synopsis mm. was written based on like an earlier screen treatment. That makes Probably. a lot of sense. Because there's, there's oddly a lot of little tiny things that are in the background that make you think, no, this used to be connected up better than it is. Um, I put for- The connective tissue. I, I put forward to you the fact that there mm-hmm. were any Klingons, Tribbles, uh, yeah, look, it's a minor thing, but oh. Oh, Klingons yeah. and Tribbles are a known, like, a, a, a situation. And also- That's true. Why the hell- did McCoy have a dead Tribble on board? That's in my notes! <laughs> okay, yeah. well, here's the other problem. Speaking, like, okay, logically within the story, why does he have it? But from a storytelling perspective, that is repeated information. We already know that this shit brings people back to life from the little girl that we got trashed in the beginning. Why yeah. do we need the Tribble? Because nobody yeah. gives a shit about Tribbles, everyone gives a shit about dying little girls. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Yeah, and also... <laughs> to be fair, I give a shit, I give a shit about dying okay. Tribbles. And okay. what? And also, what... Yeah. Also, what gave McCoy the idea to shoot a triple full of blood? Because his blood is super it? regenerative. Because science. <laughs> Why is... Okay, I'm sorry. Bones is no Tony Stark. He's not doing shit for shits and giggles, okay? I mean, if he was, he's a different kind of character than we're seeing on the screen. And I'm not saying that that would be a bad thing. That'd be awesome. But 
Damn it, man, I'm a doctor, not a billionaire playboy philanthropist. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch that. I'd watch that in a heartbeat. Well, the wife did take the planet in the divorce, and, well, he was being literal. Mm. She took the planet. The planet. That's <laughs> nice. I like that. <laughs> I, I agree with you, Brendan. I think that there is... I think that this summary is a sign of an earlier draft that probably would have been a lot better. Quite uh, possibly. Mm. Yeah, but... I don't know. There's just all sorts of weird things that they decided to do in this original, in, in the original screenplay. Like, mm-hmm. oh, have you actually looked at the original screenplay? Well, no, nah, just based on uh, mm-hmm. watching the the movie and my notes here. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think they wanted to start off with like a theme of the movie being, you know, family and all that. But then mm-hmm. it's like, no, nah, that's not interesting. Let's make it vengeance and then name that big ship vengeance because <laughs> subtle. <laughs> Wait, we are they? subtle screenwriters. I that. Yes, I missed that. That the okay. the the USS Bigger Dick was not in <laughs> fact named Bigger Dick. It was Aww. the USS Vengeance. What are they having vengeance for? Vul- Vulcan, I guess. But we're fighting the Klingons who had nothing to do with it. Wah, Whatever. Wah. You'd think the movie would have been about fallout from the whole Romulan thing. Yeah. Yeah, oh, you'd think so. Wait till you guys hear my rewrite. <laughs> well, wait till you hear it. Get right into the meat get of what we're actually trying to do here. Get the so fuck what? What, what, it. what are we going to attempt to do here? I don't think we've ever uh, done this before, have we? We have not. No. Um, so I, I believe what we're attempting here is, um, you know, and if this was a good movie, it would be a situation where we're just seeing how we could change this and make another good movie. Um, yeah. But in this case, this is a terrible movie. And so what we're doing is we're setting about how we each would fix it. Um, and, and trying to do it from a, uh, almost a working writer's perspective. Um, you know, mm-hmm. so practical changes that address both the story and also what you're attempting to do with the audience. Oh, are we trying mm-hmm. to be practical? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Money well, these is are no all object. first drafts. <laughs> Uh, and well, mine's, you know, it's questionable about the level <laughs> of draft mine is. But anyway. I didn't uh, spend like a few days working on this. What? What? <laughs> I've got years of rage built up in mine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute with Pip's treatment. You know, recall that woman and saw my notes as I was writing them on my uh, train ride back here. I was so. late <laughs> picking up Alex from the train station because I was still writing my notes. So you're a good sister. I'm a great <laughs> sister. Thank you. I so think we might have opinions. <laughs> <laughs> that is the point. Oh wait, about being siblings or about, <laughs> about this movie, but also my about each other. Let's be real. About my relative siblingness. All right, so I'm, I'm a little hesitant to go first, just because I feel like mine may be more uh, uh, raise the ground and sow salt in the <laughs> fields. Oh man, that's how okay. I was going to describe mine. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, so, uh, 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 should we go from uh, who has least to say to ha- who has the most? How do we know though? Well, I didn't fuck it. Take any mm-hmm. notes on the actual what well, I would do. Here, wait, wait, guys, guys. Here's mm-hmm. the thing. If worse comes to worse, Brendan will just edit us around. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks. Well, well, Brendan um, will fix all of our fuck ups. <laughs> story of my life. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay, all right, all right. I actually have a very practical beginning. I'm going to start. Hell with the rest of y'all. Okay. So, straight up, I am scrapping the majority of this. Um, I'm a big one for building it from the bedrock, and Star Trek has really fabulous foundations, and so that's what we're going to bring to bear here. First, you have to think to yourself, what is the purpose of the story? From both the practical and blah, 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 blah. You're introducing new viewers to Star Trek. We're picking up the ones that we picked up from the first movie, a lot of them are, do not know anything about canon. We've nicely tied off the fact that we don't know anything about cat, canon by just changing the universe. Spock's dad, I'm sorry, uh, Kirk's dad dead and Vulcan's blown up. So you can have, you can mess around with a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. The other thing you want to do is you want to revitalize old viewers. So mm-hmm. people who are old fandom, you want to make sure that there's not just something for them, but you're getting to the heart of what Star Trek's about because that's why they're fans. And finally... 
Finally, you have to build off of the first one. So stuff that happened in the first movie should have consequences in the second. Am I right? <laughs> what? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this is too far. Consequences too far. for our actions? Th- this is this is crazy talking. Um, and so it has to come down to what makes Star Trek Star Trek. You know, space is a final frontier. Exploration. Meeting new life. And, like the American frontier, probably screwing that new life over. (laughs) Except the point of Starfleet is to try and avoid that as much as possible. Which brings us to the two things that absolutely should be kept from the original movie. The Prime Directive Mm. and the War with the Klingons. So the Prime Directive gets brought up early in the movie, and then it gets ditched in favor of, like, the related but not actually synonymous thought of, is there anything you would not do for your family? These are both really, like, that's a great line. I love it. It doesn't really have a lot to do with maybe what the movie turned into. The actual, in actual canon, what we have Shatner's Kirk saying regarding captain's oaths or what have you is a starship captain's most solemn oath is that he will give his life, even his entire crew, rather than violate the prime directive. You know, the idea is there's already an answer to, is there anything you would not do for your family? And the answer is violate the prime directive. I wouldn't do that. Like, that's a huge part of Star Trek, because frequently they end up fucking it up anyway. But that's the ethical dilemma. And as, as a brief side note, in case people did not really understand what the point of the Prime Directive was, because I'm not sure it was really well defined in the movie, because our point of view character obviously are, is, is the crew of the Enterprise. And they're all like, ha ha ha, fuck this. As you know, Bob, we have to follow this. <sighs> but why? No good reason. Lol. <laughs> But the idea is, you know, the prime directive is the idea that we don't fuck around with helping or improving or even destroying civilizations that have no chance of fighting back. Because that can have long-lasting consequences that you probably don't want to be personally responsible for. If the movie was about that, if it was about that, that would have been, like, really diving into it. That would have been fantastic. Because, again, if you look at the original series from which this timeline has diverged, you know, our two big baddies generally were the Romulans and the Klingons. Romulans we dealt with in the first movie. Klingons would be great to deal with in the second. Both of these groups are conquerors. They want to expand their empires. The way to do that is to take over other planets. Either those planets are going to already be part of the Federation, so they're, you know, uh, going to have you know, mutual uh, protection, whatever, or they're going to be less civilized planets, which means that they're violating the Prime Directive, which is our deal, not theirs, but that's why we're all fighting each other. Mm -hmm. Because it's a big, you know, uh, uh, ethical value, etc. It's a big, complicated universe. It really (laughs) is. But it can be, hideously enough, it can be brought down to this simple question. It can be brought down to which is more important. Is the Prime Directive important? Is it valuable? That's some. That's a well that the Star Trek course has been brought to over and over again. And honestly, it's an important well. And they haven't come up with a good answer because there is no good answer. Here's where my plot, quote unquote, uh, goes. Again, we hit Romulans, the first movie, second movie, make it about the Klingons. You can keep a lot of the basic features of the movie we actually got. Sabotage, provoking war, secret warships and secret dockyards. Uhura being the only damn person in the Federation, evidently, who speaks Klingon. Which, by the way, uh, if you bring her more to the forefront, fixes to a certain degree anyway, the women problem of this movie, which I have to say, Carol, what's her face, did not fix Miss Underwear everything. Oh my god, she did nothing in this movie. Uh, No, I mean, she she was there to fix the women problem, but it's not a fix, is it? Um, Uh, Actually, I think think my final note in watching the uh, uh, movie mm -hmm. here, uh, actually, final two notes, Gee, Carol didn't really do much, and <laughs> Carol doesn't show up ever again after this movie. Oh, God, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, you're trying to get, you know, one of the big things with the first movie was too many dicks on the dance floor. And this was theoretically a fix for that, but not really was it. Uhura's position ends up being relegated to essentially a useless conversation with Klingons because it goes nowhere and they all get shot up and fighting with Spock. That's yeah. it. Um, yeah, and and to point out, you know, her conversation ended with her getting, getting choked. So, you know, that's oh, a positive image. There oh. you go. I forgot that. Yeah. So, I mean, you you can keep all of these major, you know, uh, uh, plot devices. You can keep these, you know, structural elements, how you frame them. Um, and you can even bring back the question of what would you do for your family? 
uh, because honor and family and those are really important to Klingons. So the question is, what's what's more important? Whose values are actually more important? And does, in fact, our valuing of our, our values of valuing the Prime Directive get in the way of letting the Klingons have their values? Um, I mean, and so that's that's where I would start. That's how I would forget the eugenics war, forget con. There are a lot of Easter eggs you could throw in in a useful way. Those tribbles could have been useful. The fact that Harry Mud was, you know, uh, thrown around because you know, it was Mud's ship and his trader clothes. Mm-hmm. You know, the fact that Cleons didn't used to have ridged foreheads. That was, you know, a great thing that got brought up during uh, uh, Deep Space Nine. I thought the Klingons just don't like to talk about they it. They don't like they to talk don't. about it. But, you know, like, this is where we could have taken the joke aspect of that and made something serious here. Um, ser- not to interject here, but serious question. Is there stuff, like, in, like, the comic books or supplemental material for this movie where they explain what the hell happened on Kronos? <laughs> for this movie or for in general? For this uh, split universe. Um, I don't know. I mean, and, and that pisses me off, honestly, because the Klingon federation relationship is so important over the course of like all of the series um Mm -hmm. enemies to lovers it's one of the things that makes star trek star trek and the fact that it's not coming into play is why Mm -hmm. there are so many people who are like this isn't a star trek movie why am i watching this this is you know that's why there's so much grief so anyway you get Koloth, Captain Koloth from the Klingons in there. You could have done so much stuff. So many. I want to find out how the Klingon Empire is different following so, Kirk's dad's death. So to sum up uh, your kind of approach to the story treatment, it's changing it from Wrath of Khan to, to or whatever, the mm-hmm. return of Wrath of Khan, whatever. Mm-hmm. Changing it instead to a kind of philosophical discussion about each... Uh, you know, the Federation and Klingons approach to like what their expansion and prime directives are, essentially. Mm-hmm. With lots of explosions, obviously. Oh, of well, course. yeah. You yeah. gotta have explosions. Uh, I don't mind having tits. I mean, that's not something I'm against. Uh, they just have to be, you know, uh, in context. They have to be in context. They have to be, they have to be necessary to the plot. <laughs> Justify tits. Damn Justify. it. I want contextual, uh, <laughs> tits. The word's oh. tits. Um, but yeah, it's so yes, I think that uh getting the history, the background of the Federation Klingon uh war or conflict conflict would have been a good way to, to go about. It. I'm sorry, what was that? Mm-hmm. You, <laughs> who's geek, who's giggling? You said Thank conflict. You. Oh con oh. <laughs> I mean, I mean con- Can we all flip. say uh, yeah, can we all take a moment here? Who giggled hugely when Spock said, God! for oh, no I did. fucking discernible reason? We Here's all the did. thing about that entire scene, right? Yep, yep. Uh, when I was watching it in the movie theater, when it first came out, the uh-huh. moment we like panned down to Kirk, I started laughing. <laughs> and, I had to, and I had to smother it. And the person I was seeing it with uh, thought I was crying. <laughs> Oh, and I, I had to go, no, 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 this is just really funny, and I shouldn't laugh in a crowded theater <laughs> at oh, the death no, scene. No, no, you laugh at that crowded theater. You laugh hard. It, oh, God, that scene and, was so awkward. It really- God, I, I, I kept on, like, making furious notes here, you know, I guess this is the engineer in me, is mm-hmm. like, why couldn't we send a robot to do this? Oh my god. Wasn't there god. a cyborg on the bridge? I mean, there are options here, I people. I have a lot this- of comments about the, I, I'm not even a scientist. I'm saying being like, I'm pretty sure that's not how gravity works. <laughs> 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 that's not how artificial gravity works. Uh, I have one that says, um, uh, the ship is not, something that you create, like you build in space is not a submarine. Um, nope. which they, sh- they lampshaded a bit, but I'm like, that, no, you're still wrong. Stop it. I question that whole beginning plan. How did they get the ship in there without being seen? Oh. Nighttime, Pip. Nighttime. Come on. <laughs> oh, and also, I'm sorry, since when does Earth not have a defensive system against I... incoming? We have that now! Now! <laughs> 
I wrote that several times uh, in the finale. It was a point of constant frustration for me because here we are. The ship is battered all to hell. And I can shine a flashlight from the bridge and signal San Francisco or whoever is watching from Earth. They're probably going like, oh, hey, two ships are fighting on the moon. Is that <laughs> weird? Yeah. Should we send somebody to investigate? Oh, hey, that both ships crashed in San Francisco. But should we send police? But they wouldn't even the crash in San Francisco, though. They wouldn't crash. They wouldn't make it to atmosphere. <laughs> Part of the plot oh, of well. the first movie is trying to get the codes to drop the Earth's defense systems. Oh. Well, they're Starfleet ships. Ooh. And actually, uh, that's something that ties into, uh, <laughs> speaking of segues, uh, that ties into, uh, a uh, script tra- treatment that I was working on, but I don't know if we want to jump right Do into it. mine or Do it. go ahead. Fuck it, Al go or for Pip it. wants to no, go for it's it. On okay. you. Oh, I'm going to actively fight with Cat, so you go first. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll take it to one side, Pip. Hey, what's what's going on? What's <laughs> <laughs> sorry? <laughs> yeah. you got um, it. Speaking about Earth Defense Forces, um, that's actually one of the things that I was starting to kind of look into when it came to developing my screen treatment, which. I actually keep a surprising amount of the original uh, movie because I was figuring I'd want to try and tweak without changing everything necessarily. <laughs> you fool. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, but among other things, uh, one of the changes I made is that uh, Marcus there, mm-hmm. he, he, he's not the head of Starfleet, F that noise. He's <laughs> pretty much the... <laughs> Now, he's the head of Starfleet's defensive capabilities, oh. uh, a branch that's recently been given more power mm-hmm. since, hey, remember that time about three years ago <laughs> when Earth almost got destroyed? Oh, good point. Good like point. It, like it. But like any man in his position, he's wanting more influence and power and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So uh, my screen treatment is a bit more. I, I wanted to try and push a bit more of you know his grab for power. Mm-hmm. And so... Uh, I was keeping a lot of that thing of like starting shit with the Klingons in order to make a false flag attack and thus actually essentially start a war with the, the Klingons and get himself more power because what does a person in power want more but of more of it? To be fair, yeah. I, I will say that actually that was something that I liked enough that I wish that they had developed better um, oh, yeah. was was the sort yeah. of false the false flag stuff. But go on, you're saying yes. Uh, that's the entirety of my plot, actually, <laughs> mostly. Um, so among other things, uh, cause I, I kind of like some of the mystery of this, you know, kind of family and stuff like that. And I was kind of trying to work on this subversion of the prodigal son story. Oh, so in what way? one of the, so, you know, you have in the prodigal son, how he goes off and does debauchery and stuff like that, comes back to daddy and mm-hmm. all is forgiven. Yay. A party is thrown. Okay. In this, the change I'm making to Benedict Cumberbatch's character. I'm oh, you're keep keeping, him hey, you're keeping I Cumberbatch? Like, all right. I, I like Cumberbatch. Come on. I, he's a good actor. I, I like him. He has an awkward face, but hey, come on. Oh. <laughs> he's, he's not con, but go on. He's, <laughs> that's the thing. He's not. Oh. The twist. Nice. You keep him John Harrison? The twist Sorry, go on. is in backstory that I haven't fully fleshed out yet because come on, I'm not going to spend a week on this <laughs> mostly <laughs> is that, um, Marcus's original background was mm-hmm. in these kind of secret ops here and mm-hmm. post USS Kelvin. That's when they discovered the USS Botany Bay. And which one's the Botany Bay? The Con that ship. Should, is that from the third movie? That's Con what? Ship. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's the ship that was what what Space Seed took on, whatever. Okay. And so him being brilliant guy, whatever, brilliant in air quotes here, is like, <laughs> oh shit, this is a treasure trove of potential informa- uh, you know, potential resources here. Mm-hmm. Revives them, and that's how we start getting high advances in Starfleet technology that were ongoing. <gasps> oh. For the last, you know, how old is Kirk? 26? 26 years? Uh, yeah, some of it. Sure. <laughs> Let's ignore it. So, Chris Pine's actual age is so, <laughs> so they've been, well, whatever Kirk's age is, canonically, I don't know, 30? Yeah. Uh, um, so okay, go on. this entire time, you know, at least initially, they had the, you know, highly advanced super beings uh, helping develop new tech for the, uh, for the fleet and... 
you know, they're mm-hmm. getting more power, more influence. Marcus, just in time, you know, kind of figures that, oh, hey, Khan's kind of a douchebag and is going to backstab me. <laughs> Puts everyone on ice except for Khan's very young son. The idea being, hey, we can, you know, brainwash this guy into an asset and we'll have like super intelligent Starfleet agents, something like that. From there, I actually kind of kept the cold open. I didn't want to change too much with it. Leading into Kirk being chewed out for violating the Prime Directive. Mm -hmm. And this stems into a bit more deep conversation between him and Pike about, you know, what it means to be responsible. Why are you fighting? What do you, why why do you do what you do? So, um, Pike more or less takes the metaphorical bullet for Kirk there and, you know, gets relieved of command of Kirk and gets shuffled off to a desk job because we don't really want to have him in the movie again. He's, He's an emotional crutch for Kirk, and rather than Side just note. killing him off. Side mm. note: did, did Captain Pike get fridged? Yes, yes, yeah. he did. Yeah, yeah he, he, he got died. fridged to uh, for the emotional male whatever bonding. Poor. He, that's okay because he was emasculated to begin with because he had he had a cane. Uh, yes, so. good point. Yeah, so, so thank you. I'm keeping Pike alive. Just you know, yeah. He he sacrifices his career more or less for Kirk because he still believes in Kirk because he thinks of Kirk as a son and vice versa. Aww. Yay, father-son relationships. That's one of the themes I'm exploring in the movie. Themes. Um, it's less family, more, you know, kind of that father-son dynamic. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. uh, actually, here's a question. Pip, you've watched mm. all the TOS. Yep. Was Kirk hedonistic, or was he just, was, I'm in love with love, which happened to uh, be, coincide with making love with you? I think it was more the latter. He's always seemed like a professional to me. Yeah. Kirk, you know, has a lot of Libido. love. I mean, yeah. <laughs> listen, I realized what I was going to say, and I realized it was going to sound weird. Um, and I'm trying to remember more of the series and not the, like, meme of him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the meme. Um, and he does sleep with a lot of women. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not sure it's so much hedonistic so much as he actually does care about them in that moment. It's just. But that's the thing. New Kirk doesn't really have that. Well, New Kirk is messed no. up. Yeah. That's true. That's the nice thing about killing off his dad early on is that we're very established that he's he's got some brain problems, like th- that he's got some emotional issues. Yes. Yeah. Um, and also, the, you remember that the original series had the problem where it couldn't do uh, overarching plots. Yep. Very so true. it had to restart, and so you had to have these romantic interests, you know, one after another. Of course. <laughs> I, I know what I said. Uh, <laughs> uh, the the thing is, a lot of his love is a love for his ship and love for his crew. That's true. One of the reasons mm. it doesn't work out with Carol or any of the uh, women in his life, and I'm going to say men too, because it's a new age. Uh, uh, I mean, once you sleep with an alien, spot. I mean... yeah. But the reason it never works out with them for long is because he'll always go back to his command. Uh, and his crew, mm. because that's those are the people that he values. Okay. Uh, and it's a bit. No, I like that. It's a bit self sacrificing because you know uh, these are the people he has to be here for, and a bit a legitimate belief in what he's doing. Of course. And that's something else that's missing, at least from the beginning of this film, which could have been developed, which is that no, Kirk's still in love with the idea of being, you know. I get to have a ship. Yeah. Woo-hoo, woo-hoo. And it, this movie could have been a really great way to be like, well, what do you really value? What is it that you value? Again, bringing home family, mm-hmm. bringing home, uh, uh, you know, the values of the prime directive. I really like Brendan. I really like, um, everything you had to say about, uh, uh, I, I like the idea of turning, um, that admiral into a uh, space defense, bring, tying it back into the first movie. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It sounded like Harrison was the was the kid. Yeah, Is that yeah, right? yeah. Uh, okay, good. Son of that uh, was great. Son of Khan, there. You know, I thought that was really good because then Khan was supposed to be this mastermind, but he this his son would be uh, 
the next generation, the second <laughs> photocopy. <laughs> you know? And the thing uh, is, you know, not having what that was that that two dimensional thinking, Captain. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, none of the weaknesses. Uh, um, well, except he'd have all the fucking weaknesses because let's face it, <laughs> he was dumb. <laughs> Um, but maybe in your version, he's not. Oh, yes. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, I thought that was all really good. I like that. Yeah. And it takes away my Klingon thing. So actually, that, no, like, but. that's the, that, oh. that's, that's act one, act two. <gasps> oh man, we're getting alerts go <laughs> off and three Klingon warbirds have entered into the neutral, have entered from the neutral zone. They're incurring into Starfleet space. Hot. And Admiral Marcus there. Orders the clean, orders the uh, Enterprise crew in person to uh, go pursue and essentially show the fact that we got bigger dicks. Um, nice. Now I do have a very bigger dick. And one of the side effects of Kirk violating that prime directive there is that uh, Harrison there is put on board as a liaison to uh, nice. Ooh, nice. Uh, Admiral Marcus. So. They go out there to the, you know, edge of Federation space there. And one of the weird things I found about these movies, and I think the newest Star Wars movies are also making this weird now, is, man, warp travel's gotten really fast nowadays. It's like, it seems <laughs> like it was like 50 yeah. seconds from Earth to Kronos. Um, but that's beside the point. That's a rant for another day. Um, that's engineering. That's science talk. Yeah. Save that for later. Yeah, save it for later. Um now, what happens here is that the Enterprise utterly trounces these ships. It's like, it's, well, not utterly, there's like some space action, but like, it's like, it's not really intense on the Enterprise, which you'd think would be weird. And it mm. is, uh, it's a science ship. Harrison's really pushing, you know, like, you know, we have to follow orders. We have to, uh, destroy this ship. And this is where, like, you know, you know, Spock's like, you know, maybe more in, you know, insubordination, but matching with morals starts mm-hmm. kicking in as well as, you know, fighting for stuff that's right and all that, yada, yada, yada. Instead of outright destroying the ships, you know, Kirk orders to have them be disabled. What is oh, weird is they disable the ships and they have the time to, you know, do a quick scan and they find there's no live sign uh, life signs on board oh that's awesome there are the 72 capsules inside <gasps> and the thing is uh they go you know instantly they form an away team harrison is really keen on getting on board because he's gone from being a cool cucumber to starting to have a bit of a weird edge like he mm-hmm. knows something because he does and <laughs> They go aboard, they find that it's actually the residents of the Botany Bay, and that's when Harrison flips the fuck out and more or less transports all the Enterprise away team off the ships, steals them all, and goes at warp away. Enterprise is about to be in hot pursuit, but that's when Marcus's hand is revealed, and it was all kind of setting up like a like the fact that like, oh hey, Enterprise, you were just, uh, you know, you just destroyed those, uh, Klingon ships there. What the hell? This is the neutral zone. But yeah, I, that's a little hazy. I don't quite know how that would work yet. Maybe they were more or less lured into there without being fully aware, sabotage, whatever. I don't know. Keep that aspect. Um, that's a well, little bit a hazy. Way. Yeah. What's that? Let me, let me back you up here. Mm-hmm. How did the capsules get on board? I'm not sure I'm following that logic. Uh, How did the capsules get onto the Klingon? Well, that's the first? thing. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the things I was kind of toying with is whether or not I wanted to keep Scotty aboard one of the ships because Scotty mm-hmm. is awesome and can do no wrong. And ain't nobody's going to be teleporting Scotty without his permission. I mean, come on. He, <laughs> he made the equations that power pretty much all the advanced transporters of that Star Trek or sorry, that Starfleet uses nowadays. So I'm thinking that yeah. he was aboard one of the other vessels and is doing his engineering shit. Um, <clears throat> and through dialogue with Scotty, it's revealed that the Warbirds more or less just look like Warbirds cosmetically, but Scotty would recognize oh. Starfleet engineering uh, standards. Holy shit. So 
the ships were all just meant to more or less create attacks of provocation from the Klingons. They were maybe more counting on, uh, the, you know, the warships to destroy the Enterprise, but Harrison, surprise, surprise, had been suspecting for a while that Marcus was hiding something with his attack. Uh, and the confirmation that the pods were on there is the last straw and he goes crazy, yada, yada, yada. Uh, can I, can I drop for you, uh, this thought? Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to get both the Klingons and Starfleet involved in this, mm-hmm. um, what if, uh, what if the defense guy or whatever, Marcus, yeah, uh, the ad- yeah, Admiral has, um, I don't know, has some captured Klingons as Ooh. one does. And, uh, what if he's killed them? They're dead. <laughs> uh, uh, and they're on, and he has them stuffed onto those ships so that when, th- the Enterprise mm. destroys those ships, then, uh-oh. The Enterprise killed uh, the Klingons. Interesting. The Enterprise killed the Klingons, which the, and the Klingons themselves have been searching for these people. You know, uh, maybe okay. they're important or what have you. And so the Klingons are then involved. It's a matter of honor. Uh, and Starfleet's fucked. And it's like, you know, nobody's going to be looking to see whether or not those ships are Starfleet based if there's Klingon bodies around. <laughs> wreckage is wreckage, right? Yeah. I mean... <laughs> Yep. I mean, if they just confirm um, that some of the biological matter was Klingon, definitely. I mean, the rest is just carbon. Exactly. So that, that, that's <laughs> more or less the plot I was working the ships, with. Yeah. 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 But if you disable the ships instead, suddenly you have people going on, or you have Scotty wandering around and being like, what the fuck's with all these dead Klingon bodies laid out neatly in rows? <laughs> and oh my God, what the, what the hell? Um, yeah. Uh, so I think that you could have had, and, and so that also brings for the audience a certain measure of, well, shit, you know, the Klingons aren't necessarily, like, yes, they're, they have opposing views, but they did not come out well of this either. No. Um, that's actually, like, I was, that, that's the problem I was kind of running into toward Act 3 is, because I mm-hmm. don't know a lot about what happened to the Klingons between movies, like, I guess they oh. held uh, the the Romulan crew from the future as prisoners, but then they busted out, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I think I've gone too long here. Uh, that, that, that's the gist I kept of it. Interrupting. That was There's, my fault. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, but that, the, the gist of it is then what pers- what happens to the, the basic cat and mouse game and Marcus revealed as the, the you know, mastermind, but the big bad. I mean, there ends could have up- been an actual chess game. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. But the thing is the actual grandmaster chess player it was Harrison who, I'm toying whether or not uh, escapes at the end of the movie. I mean, the pods don't, mm-hmm. but um, I'm thinking Harrison goes off into unknown space to uh, maybe rear his head again later on. Well, yeah, and, and frankly, if both the Cleons and Starfleet are out to get him, that makes a nice setup for a future movie where, like, mm-hmm. now it's time for the Klingons and, and the Federation to maybe work together against a common evil. Hold their hands um, and... I don't know. Make a wish. Sing Kumbaya. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so no, I like a lot of what you did there. I like I like a lot of that. Oh, yeah. Fuck into darkness. How about that? Ooh. Uh-huh. Ooh. Uh, that's, so that's it sounds like name. Al might have some uh, some story the treatments then. Uh, <laughs> the spicy version. Uh, yeah. <laughs> into darkness at night. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're back from a break. <laughs> and I have my version, you know, and and not as involved as either of you guys is because I don't have that kind of time. Wow! Uh, Ouch! Wow! Burn! Oh no! I, I, I no. That hurts me in all three of my feelings. Yeah. Well, I do have that kind. I know time. That's you know, precisely my problem on the train. Uh, uh no. Uh, you're busy uh, getting girls. I know what's going on there. <laughs> Uh, no. Uh, so, my, a big thing with, uh, with the, uh, Star Trek Into Darkness is that it has two problems going for it. It's plot and it's characters. I, my notes on characters kind of went to shit, so let's just stick with plot. It ha- it suffers from too many eggs in one basket. You know, you have... Amen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You yeah. have the thing with Admiral Marcus, you know, and his militarization of Starfleet. The rising tensions between, eh, in the Federation and Theons. And Khan. At most, you can do, have two of those. 
And I'm really, and I'm suggesting you know, that you pick one and go with it. So maybe like a hint of the third to set up uh, the next movie. Mm. Yeah. Well, and to remind the audience that's the bigger yeah. universe. But yeah. So one of those plots is essentially yours, cat, with the uh, with the Klingons. Mm-hmm. Everyone has been hurt by the Romulans. There is now a power vacuum. Now that Ooh. with the loss of Vulcan. That is a oh, oh nice. Oh yeah, yeah. very nice. Yeah, and holy shit, I yeah. forgot. <laughs> Vulcan was a big fucking deal. <laughs> my uh, just a, a few billions <laughs> lives. <laughs> just as a side note, my notes actually have uh, actually says. Do you think Spock wins all of his arguments with? Do you, do you remember the time my planet died? <laughs> <laughs> In the third movie, yeah. yes. Well, my notes. Uh, so, my notes. Uh, all right, go, keep going, keep going. My notes say, uh, he was okay. His planet blew up. So oh, anything he does is kind of, uh, you know, kind of does, you know, for that. But no, uh, yeah. Justified. Uh, so have the Enterprise crew send them off to Kronos on a diplomatic mission. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And bring in the point of the Federation. Yep. Good. And remember, and, the Enterprise are, is meant to be nerdy scientists. Yeah, uh, and and diplomats. True. They're not act. The Enterprise is not actually military. Oh. Yeah, no. <laughs> the Starfleet in itself is not not a military venture. Nope. They're not meant to be. Yeah, they're a peacekeeping armada. <laughs> <laughs> Talking briefly about Star Trek, you know, the original series they were exploration sets, a bunch of scientist nerds, and sometimes diplomacy because they had first contact. Uh, Next generation, they were diplomats. It was a diplomat class ship. They had, like, really nice food and stupid uniforms. <laughs> uh, Deep Space Nine, they were holding down the fort to try to, you know, give uh, uh, a sense of stability in an unstable zone. Uh, not exciting, except it was. Um, and Voyager, even more science nerdy. Even more. They were the nerdiest of all of them. And, you know, well, we saw how that ha- worked out. But, yeah, they're, they're a bunch of nerd explorers. Oh, yeah. That's it. it- that's kind of my problem with these movies is that they are too actiony. I mean, the, you know, Utrecht always had them at low home point and now we must battle, but you know, they, they avoided it at all costs. You know, at, yeah. You know, mm. you know, I do not want to do this. Well, that's what made the Borg so terrifying is that there was no way to, to use diplomacy with them. There is none of the usual shit that Starfleet had spent generations <laughs> working on, <laughs> um, you know, was worthy, like could, could do anything against that. And so they really had to be like, and the only way to deal with Borg is to wipe them the fuck out, which is also against Federation yeah. uh, uh, standards. I mean, so that's, it had a ton of action, you know, a ton of action. You can do tons of stuff with the Borg, but it comes down to their values. And, Hashtag uh, Marcus was right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I mean, well, it's- from a certain, that's one of the things I think is lacking in a lot of these kind of movies is the villain there has to be justifying it somehow. And I think, yeah, having Earth almost be destroyed is a really mm. good justification to try and militarize Starfleet at all costs. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. All right. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so with the Klingon minutes, this, uh, well, uh, while they're there, Things go south because Klingon, the Klingons have also been in trying to figure out what to do after after the Romulans because they also got hit bad. And you know maybe there is a power or struggle between you know what what do we do now here? Do we expand aggressively to make up for what what was lost, or or do we you know go back again? And and you know the Enterprise crew. Get stuck in the middle of that. Oh. Yeah. Um, no, I'm, I'm still like wicked loving the diplomacy. I'm not sure. I, I question whether or not we have the background on Klingons as an audience um, to get into the wherewithal of their politics. I mean, this would be their specific politics. Uh, a way to introduce it to the audience. True. Yeah. Mm, like a, Very true. Like a Klingon diplomat that came to Earth first, like... Hanging out with Ahura. Oh my god, Warp! 
Well, well, well uh, Worf's grandpa Worf. or grandma, whatever. No, no, because the the women. Oh, that would fix the women problem again. <laughs> Can you hmm. imagine that? Oh my god. Well, also, uh, as the crew of the Enterprise figure out how to deal with the Klingons on a diplomatic level, you know, what is their culture like? Uh, how can we, mm. you know, make sure we're not accidentally offending? Uh, we, the audience, can learn what their culture is like, what they find offensive, uh, yeah. things like that. Yes. And vice versa. It would be a really good opportunity to, uh, for the Enterprise to teach the Klingons, the audience, about the values of the, the Federation, the Starfleet, and the future, and blah, yeah. blah, blah. Yeah, it's a better way of doing exposition. Oh, yeah. Every, yeah. If Show, you can don't couch, freaking tell. <laughs> if you can couch your information in stuff, one that the audience actually wants to know, if it's interesting, they'll listen. Um, but also, uh, 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 what's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, exposition through inference is my favorite thing in the world. You know, you figure out that, oh, we're, you know, we're a spacefaring culture because we're in fucking space. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Not because we're like, we are a spacefaring culture. <laughs> no. You see a star field out the window. There. Yeah. The end. Yeah. You know, that that's actually one of the things that really annoyed me about this movie. Way too mm. much time is spent on frickin' Earth. <laughs> 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 like I mentioned it before, you know, shining a flashlight from the Enterprise bridge uh, mm. during the finale. Yeah, you see Earth there the entire time. It took them 50 seconds to get there from Klingon space, but whatever. Yeah, it just irritated me. It's like, it's Star Trek. Understandably. Not yeah. Earth Trek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not actually a Western, is it? No, we're in space. <laughs> Alex, keep right. talking. So that was one. Um, one. Yeah, I still have two more. Uh, uh -huh. Go. The other is the Admiral's plot. You know, he is Miltra. Is it thing, but have it be more gradual, like a, hey, what's with all, all these suspicious acquisitions? And it's like, who, who ordered, or, you know, 200 tons of, of steel? Well, and where, where did it go? You know, mm. who, oh, to make the shipyards. Yeah. Oh, for the, for, the, oh, yeah, like where, how do we get the, the practicalities of the secret shipyards? Yeah. You have to have the, you have to have the place to have it. It's space. It's hard to build shit up yeah. there. Weren't they hiding uh, you have it to have behind all the workers. Jupiter? You have to have all the transport. You have to... <laughs> the energy. The... Oh, my God. You're right. It can't really be that secret, can it? Yeah, no. And, you know, have them discover it in a better way than have it in con give them the Google pen. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was so annoying. Uh... Yeah. I, I'm not even sure really why he gave the Google pen. How did that work out? Like, what was the point of that? Uh, I think Khan just felt like doing it for giggles. I think he I mean, was trying it, to... And that's not a good enough uh, I think he was trying to play both sides against each other. Did he... Mm, I can I see guess. that. No, there was... It, it didn't if really it help better, him. it would have been Actually, great. there was no way for Khan to have known that Ed Kirk would, would have somebody uh, not on mm. the ship who could go to the shipyard and get on successfully. Well, he he lis he he had a copy of the script, that's oh, how. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, that that's why Spock Prime showed up. Because he had a copy of the script. Uh and he was like, "Okay, this is what's going on. Don't worry." It's true he did. There's have no a reason for Spock Prime. <laughs> he had a copy of the script. Okay. Wait, what are right, you talking so about magic blood? That makes no sense. We just killed him. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait. This, your con is a white guy? Um, white? Yeah, that's strange. Oh, I'm I have pretty sure you actually you're thinking of someone else. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, but wait, we're going to get to you. Keep going, Al. All right. Um, also, during this time, Kirk is still demoted. He has not, throughout this entire thing, he has not gotten his captainship back. Because good, because he was not a captain for about ten minutes. <laughs> that's that's true. You've learned your lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Slap on the wrist. Yeah. And so go for all this. You know, keep Carol if you want. Uh, you know, maybe have her be more suspicious. You know, what are your loyalties? Who knows? Not 
Fuck my dad. <laughs> Maybe she could have an actual reason to be on board and didn't fake her way on and prove that the security on all Starfleet vessels is apparently bullshit. Yeah. Maybe that. <laughs> I mean, that never surprised me. Yeah. <laughs> That's bullshit. <laughs> I've watched That's the true. original series. That, that might be the most Star Trek thing. <laughs> Someday, let me tell you, you guys. Said- <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. anyway, uh, kind of moving this along. Uh, so second plot is military intrigue plot, sounds like. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And third plot. That's where you decide to keep Khan. Because <laughs> apparently you decide to go with that. And fine. Okay. Just make Raph again. Except you can't. Because you already had most of that in, in the first movie. Oh, whoops. Remember? The whole entire <laughs> her vengeance thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. vengeance is uh, That, that was a big mistake, and this entire movie was making its theme vengeance. Yeah, because you, yeah. I mean, yeah. you already had that. It's been done. And that's not the feel of Star Trek. You know, the feel of Star Wars is in the title. <laughs> <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it's war, it's rebellion. Star Trek is about the journey and the friends we made along the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, the movies are a little different. I mean, yeah. they they tend to have a bit more action tropes. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, like, Wrath of Khan, it was more or less space Moby Dick. I mean, mm-hmm. come on. They, they referenced Moby Dick several times throughout oh, the movie. It was about as blunt, <laughs> yes, about as blunt as it could yeah. be. Uh, Kirk gets a copy for his birthday at the beginning oh, of the movie. Khan makes several references to Moby Dick over the course of hunting Kirk. It, it's That's it, it's not very subtle. Yeah. I love you, uh-huh. Star Trek. But the idea is that, <laughs> but they, they, they did at least kind of make it a point of saying like, "Hey, vengeance, it's not going to end well for you in mm-hmm. the end." Mm-hmm. Yeah. As opposed to this, just that, not that was not. Yeah. Okay. Vengeance. It just kind of peters out and <laughs> you punch a guy a lot until <laughs> And pass you're out. done. So, Al, let me, yeah. let me sum up for you. Um, so you have three potential solutions. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I still haven't finished Khan here. Oh, yet. shit. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. Uh, we can't do Space Seed again because it only really works as an ep- episode for my, hey, now. Pippi, you can, can, can you confirm? <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, what do you do? Either remove Khan or have My the, solution. Have Khan and all of the uh, Botany Bay unfrozen, and they have already all infiltrated Starfleet. <gasps> oh, oh. I like that. What yep. Is- so it becomes like a sp- Spy with super intelligent beings. Spy movie. Yep. You know, and it also solves the, the why are all our senior command in one place is mm. like sitting ducks. Oh, God, that was so because dumb. Because their staff well, arranged it. Their staff oh. arranged it and or they were the ones who wrote the protocols. Yeah. You know, again, the, the, that was a great part of the original, of, of the film that we are dissecting is that, you know, that was pretty damn clever. You know, you create a, 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 a destructive thing over here. Protocol says you all gather. That's, that was the actual point of it was to, you know, kill this. Yeah. That was a nice. It's just there's. <laughs> It's a stupid protocol, though. It is a stupid protocol, but it makes a lot more sense if you're basically pulling a Hydra, and uh, <laughs> which well, it's it's a thing. It's a known thing in emergency services that if there's one uh, explosion or mass casualty planned thing, there is possibly going to be another one specifically uh, targeting, targeting response. Targeting the response. Oh shit! Yeah, that's that's Research. a thing. Research, nice. Um. Which is why it was dumb of them in the case of a terrorist action, which that what, which what was, that was, yeah. uh, for them all to meet in one place that was easily accessible with windows. <laughs> and why not in space yeah. with ships with around the, them? Yeah, yeah. and what about no force fields? defenses. Don't they have force fields? Uh, it's uh, hazy in, in the okay. new TOS. Yeah, um, they they refer to shields, but it seems more like. It's like an exterior armor plating, I oh, think. Okay. It's not like it's not like next generation shields when they actually had a budget to make okay. shields. Alright, I'll accept that this time. Right. So yeah. 
I mean, heck, that could be one of the new military uh, developments that uh, Starfleet Defense has created is the actual, like, force field and ain't that cool actually i really like the idea of uh of mixing yours bren and and al's to uh to the idea of uh uh you know here's this secretary of defense or what have you um marcus's defense guy mm-hmm. uh and he uh he brings on these people or they bring themselves on something like that and that's part of the whole he's a he's being a puppet essentially um Oh, yeah, but exactly. he doesn't know. Well, the best puppet doesn't exactly. know it's a puppet. But, you know, so then there's all these protocols in place and it actually makes these, you know, superhumans seem superhuman and intelligent uh, as opposed to what they currently are now, which is dumb. Yeah. And yeah. popsicles. All right. Um, because because we've been going on for a little while here, let's uh, segue on over to Pip. Hey, hey Pip. <laughs> How's it going? It's going okay. I have opinions. Do it. <laughs> you have, what? Yeah. I know. Could have fooled me. Wild. So, so I'm going to start with just one small fix, and I actually mean it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. To to at least kind of fix the problem where Carol did absolutely nothing but be naked and scream. <laughs> <laughs> and get her leg broken. Uh, oh God, she yeah. Oh, she did get her leg broken. Um, yeah. uh, and she did disarm the torpedo but that was that was a false weird. it wasn't matter anyway because it wasn't a real bomb because there was a fucking dude inside so it was fake anyway keep going well, it, oh. it was it did have a warhead did it uh. yeah it, it was armed okay it could have exploded it just also had a dude in it okay um but uh the thing is Sp- scotty and carol were on the vengeance at the same time mm-hmm. carol could very easily have been the one to sabotage the ship in some way. She could have done something useful while in enemy enemy territory and made her loyalties straight up known uh, and uh, helped uh, the Enterprise. That is an excellent point. Actually, that's one of my notes, is how long does it take to get Carol onto the bridge? Because there's a significant period of time after she's been beamed aboard the Vengeance uh uss bigger day USS bigger. <laughs> my apologies yes i should use the correct nomenclature um <laughs> uh, uh before she gets brought from presumably the transporter pad which should not be that far to the bridge and there's like 20 minutes in between um so yeah well she had to take a nap <laughs> naps <laughs> are important naps are very important maybe if con yeah, there could have been nap. <laughs> there could have been like 20 minutes of carol and scotty having adventures in the vengeance and I, there could have been a lot of things. There could have been, you know, ugh, there could have been so much. I, I did like how Scotty had a lot more to do. That's true. Scotty was very amusing and fun. Yes. Um, yeah. So, and as Scotty should character. Yeah. Um, but I'm sorry, Pip. Keep going. You, I'm assuming you have more than one crack. <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, yes. My other thing, uh, is how they, if we had to use Khan. Mm-hmm. Uh, they totally fucked him up. <laughs> they made it by casting Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, he was withdrawn and alien and cold. Oh, yeah. Whereas Khan is meant to be sort of charming and dangerous in a way you can't really, uh, stay away from. I think it was like, what, infectiously well, charming? Yeah. Yeah. He's he's also emotionally abusive. He draws you in, he hurts you, uh, he apologizes, you come back. Wait, so he's Space Joker. <laughs> kind well, of. I, I really. get the impression that he's supposed to be a straight-up sociopath. I mean, and so we're talking about people who, uh, uh, yeah, they are, you know, the, the Jeffrey Dahmer types. They are incredibly charming, um, and, and that's part of what draws you in. And that's what makes them dangerous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if, if you can sense that there's something wrong, you can't quite put your finger on it because, you know, he hasn't actually done anything. Mm-hmm. Oh, they seem so nice. Um, well, that's why the casting was so brilliant the first time around because, my God, what's his face there could, like, charm the socks off of a cat. I don't, I don't well, know. I'm sure we could there. find, like, there's, like, lots of really good Indian American actors that could, you know, be that level of charm can as I well. Can I just throw out, th- remember Mohinder from, uh, uh, heroes, Ooh, yeah. yeah. That hair by itself 
just says to me, I want to trust so, you and fall in love with you. Ha- have him wear the, the plastic peck suit that uh, Ricardo <laughs> Montalban wore. So I was actually uh, scrolling through Memory Alpha, uh, the Star Trek wiki. Oh, me too. I did that earlier. High fives. Um, and uh, they actually talked about the casting of Khan and how they thought casting a person of color uh, as a villain would be racist because he's a big bad and mm-hmm. uh, Indian. And I was all like, except you made this perfect human specimen white. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. I mean, so there's, there's. <sighs> and also, also, even if it's still racist, Khan in the original series, which is the timeline that has remained unchanged. Ah, yes. Or it, uh, Khan comes from a time that has remained unchanged. He went into the ice, <laughs> uh, <laughs> in the 1990s. Oh yeah, that's right. So they actually just straight up changed his race, his canonical race. Do you guys remember the eugenics wars back in the nineties? That, that was, was a weird so time. Wild. It was tough. By the way, guys, don't tell them my secret. <laughs> <laughs> so, so either, either, mm-hmm. uh, if we want to keep the same plot, uh, either we recast Khan into someone better. <laughs> And I like Benedict Cumberbatch, but he was wrong for it. I agree. Um, yeah. Or we at least say that you woke up a different person. Uh, that he's one of the other 72 and Khan is still asleep. Well, yeah. I mean. It's like the looming threat that Khan's going to get woken or up. Or even just yeah. Yeah, the danger oh, that, of course, you wouldn't wake up Khan. He was the really problematic one. But this one was probably fine. He didn't do any, you know. Well, actually, Khan was in the history books once you knew to look for him as the worst of the tyrants well, yeah. from the eugenics war. You said he was, though. He was the worst of them? So, like, just don't... Mm-hmm. And so there could have been a great conversation. Also, describing the eugenics war, which wasn't brought up, um, not in a, you know, really useful way. Um, but it could have been in a, you know, like, but of course, don't worry, we didn't wake up to that one. We're no fool. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but also, Alex's solution would work out here as well. I mean, yeah, you know, don't wake up Khan, wake up his son. Maybe Khan got it on, Khan got it on with a lot of people. I don't remember what uh, his, his lady love was in the original, but. Uh, MacGyver. No. A crewman. I thought, I thought, I thought he seduced a crewman yeah, in Space he Seed. Uh, he, he discussed, uh, seduced a historian. Yeah, he did. Oh, that's right. Uh, because, again, they're nerds on the Enterprise, so of course they have a historian on board. Kirk was a fucking nerd. <laughs> I keep he paper read, books. He, they, <laughs> they reference Milton in Space Seed. So, theoretically, I, maybe not Cumberbatch, but, st- you know, uh, still, you could have had... A reference, but without having it be overt. Yeah. 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 And retreading old ground. Because mm-hmm. that's the thing, like... I think part of what made Star Trek 2009 so popular was that it was more or less a fresh reboot. It wasn't rehashing an old Star Trek movie. Yeah. Well, also, it, it because of the change in the, you know, that there had been a change in the universe, you could have things like a ton more aliens around. In the original series, you know, who was with the Federation? Vulcans. That was pretty much it. Everybody else was like, go fuck yourselves. Um, well, and the Andorans and the other people. Uh, yeah, whatever. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the Andorans. Um, <laughs> but, you know, in, in these series, we have, you know, like, the uh, guy with a weird chip in the back of his head and girl with funky this and Orion slave girls are busy being not Orion slave girls, which I think is really, really cool. It allows for more di- diversity in our aliens, which is what the audience wants, hmm. uh, while remaining true to what would have been going on at the time if one makes certain assumptions about stuff. Hmm. As opposed to, I think we've discussed, not on the podcast, but uh, previously we've discussed, you know, the problems of, uh, say, Star Trek Enterprise, the, which was supposed to be set hmm. around uh, Cochrane's time, I guess, shortly after, or so before the original series, where suddenly there are like hmm. 8 yeah. billion more aliens around. It's like, no, you're still within original canon, canon, so... All y'all aren't here. I want to see my gangster planets. Where are my Nazi Woo! planets? That's what 
Or it could have been like, hey, let's go, let's go mess shit up. Or we're humans and we're, we haven't really <laughs> figured out this intergalactic diplomacy shit yeah, yet. But so they had it on oops. board, on board. They had crewmen who were different aliens. It's like that wasn't, that wasn't a thing. No, not at that point yeah. in their history. But it could be, but like okay. now with enterprises, uh, uh, with new tricks canon, at least where they are now, yeah, you could have a bunch of different aliens because shit went differently. So there you go. That's why I like the original, uh, the first one of these. Um, and they could, they should have built off of that. And we've discussed that by this point. Pip, I'm sorry. I've interrupted you again. No worries. <laughs> uh, and if we want to talk about a uh, the theme of the movie, mm-hmm. because vengeance is a stupid theme. Very stupid. For this. Uh, mm-hmm. And... Uh, uh, I love you, Kat, but I don't care about the Prime Directive <gasps> as much as you do. Fuck you. <laughs> yep. Scandal. Breaking hearts all over the place. <laughs> no, I want to. I want to bring it back to the notion of uh, love and loyalty between the crew, because the whole movie, Kirk is pissing everyone off, left, right, and center, uh, and oh, yeah. no one wants to be around him, and no one wants to be around <laughs> anyone else. And I'm like, no, no, I am here for my space friends. <laughs> That's true. That's a very good point. And and like the the point of the mirror universe is that they were all at each other's throats, and that's why the mirror universe was bad. Uh, yeah. Oh, and and awesome. The, obviously, but. <laughs> <laughs> in the original uh, episode Space Seed, there is uh, a scene where uh, Khan is uh, Khan and uh, the other super people because he's woken them all up. Uh, Which was smart. Uh, That's the smart move. Sorry, come on. Yes. Uh, uh, they're threatening uh, the main command crew uh, to help them take over the Enterprise because as much reading as I've done, kind of difficult to take over a ship 200 years uh, advanced for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they've got Kirk in a decompression chamber and they're like, you can watch him die. Uh, unless you stand up and do something about it. Uh, and sure, they all want to help Kirk, but they've also got a fuck you attitude. Yeah, they do. Uh, with each other. And they know that Kirk wouldn't want them to do this. Uh, and Uhura, by the way, has the best fuck you eyes. <laughs> mm. Uh, she's my hero. Uh, cause they want her to run the, the, the screen cause she's the only one who can do it, apparently. Uh, and one of them slaps her, and everyone's all like, oh, fuck, no, you didn't. Uh, <laughs> but they have blasters. Uh, uh, and she just looks up <laughs> with murder in her eyes, uh, and continues to go to fuck all for them. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm here for my space friends. Okay, so how would you fix it to space friends? Uh, well, I would not do Wrath of Khan. <laughs> Okay. See, now you're getting back to my area where it's like, <laughs> Good night, folks. where my, my solution was also not to do Wrath of Khan. I think it's very interesting the way that this broke up. You and I, while having different ideas about what the point should be, whereas mine's clearly right. Um, but we did, <laughs> but, but we did, uh, uh, sort of, you know, say, let's, let's go back down to bare basics. Let's go down to theme and make the movie about that. Whereas Bren and Al uh, went in the direction of, let's see how much of this we can save. Uh, you know, keeping... <laughs> it's a salvage op, yeah, not a... Yeah, exactly. It's a salvage <laughs> op. Um, and, and uh, uh, you know, but still, I think that we all came with really good solutions. I'm really interested in what... As much as I love well, my well, thing, I think I'm very interested in the way that Brendan and Alex decided to try to... Uh, well, to be fair, wait, I, I have more. Oh. Just a little bit. Of course. Uh, uh, to keep the idea of Wrath of Khan, mm-hmm. like the idea of, you know, uh, oh, we have all this old episodes, what can we do with that? Mm-hmm. Uh, you could have made a movie of a different episode. Ooh. Ooh. What's your suggestion? There are mm. like 80 of them. Spock's if brain. you include the- Spock's brain. <laughs> No, fuck you. <laughs> uh, if you include uh, uh, the unaired pilot that got uh, folded into the menagerie. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, 80 plots to choose from. And uh, spin the wheel. Yeah. And then if you do one of those, you sort of have the idea of Wrath of Khan. Because like, oh, they're doing the, for this second movie like they did with the last second movie. But we don't have all that baggage. Mm-hmm. 
the problem is that I think that there was a lot of thought about how The Wrath of Khan was a fantastic movie. It was the first really good Star Trek movie, I think. Um, mm. And, mm-hmm. it, you know, it, it pulled off of a really great episode, but it had the backstory. Um, it was – there's this great phrase about uh, fandom being the point of a long spear. Um, you know, so, yeah, you get the point all the way at the front, but you get all the spear behind it to thrust it home. I mean, which was what made Wrath of Khan work. Um, we don't have the long spear here, uh, you know, to make that kind of thing. You, ha- We're still developing, we're still making the spear. I think that there's a missed opportunity to come back to all of that, the sort of uh, backstory elements that get dropped in for an episode and then forgotten for the next one because mm-hmm. they didn't have season long arcs. Mm-hmm. Like, for instance, did you know that when Kirk was a kid, he witnessed a different genocide? What? What? <laughs> During no, the episode. No, 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 no. <laughs> During the episode Conscious for the King, uh, yeah, uh, Conscious of the King, mm-hmm. uh, there are some players come to the Enterprise, you know, for reasons of cultural stuff. They like plays. And Kirk recognizes one of the actors as this warlord <laughs> <laughs> who starved a planet when he was a kid. Like you do. Whoops. Uh, damn. Uh, and, uh, very few people survived, including Kirk. Uh, he was a really young kid, so he doesn't remember a lot of it, plus there was trauma. Yeah. So part of it is him trying to convince everyone that this is a thing. Oh no! <laughs> Gaslighting! Oh, shit. Uh, and, uh, the guy actually feels guilty and is trying to turn his life around or something. It's been a long time since I watched the episode. <laughs> <laughs> and I should have rewatched it for this, but whatever. Uh, and so you could have gone back to that. How how does that go down in this universe? Yeah, that, that's okay. So so your fix is addressing kind of like this genocidal warlord uh, plot or line, perhaps one of the other really good uh, things that happen in the original series. So yours is the practical fix. Yours is the practical, which is you know how do we make this for modern? Yeah, you know, what. In terms of making a second Star Trek New Trek film for the audiences to to solve the problems that I brought up, which is, you know, we need to follow up with the first one. We need to bring in new guard and stuff like that. Yours is to go back to the well, but just a different well. Well, yes, a not poisoned one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we reference the old episode. It brings in the old people. They go, oh, yes, I recognize this. Mm-hmm. You tell the story in a new way so that all the new people can go, oh, look this is Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and all the old people can go this is just like this old episode you should watch it and it brings the new people into the old series there you go i like that so pip how how do you imagine uh like the destruction of vulcan playing into all this like as far as like the connective tissue between the first movie and say connecting to a pre-existing episode well the death of vulcan does throw a wrench into a lot of things (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> also also wait wait now that i'm thinking about it uh vulcan uh, the rest of the vulcan race is now severely underpopulated mm-hmm. they may every seven years yeah they do well that becomes into play in the third movie now are you suggesting that some of the third movie stuff should have come in on the second possibly because I thought that that was a great moment in the third movie where we're like, no, no, sure, you know, like this is some shit we need to talk about. Um, yeah, and I totally hmm. fine with it in the third movie. I need to rewatch the third movie because I forgot about that. Okay, wait, uh, we, we shouldn't. We actually probably shouldn't. He has Al- Alex hasn't seen it at all. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, Al, it's on Amazon Prime. <laughs> I know it's on Netflix, isn't it? I don't know. Or is it on uh, Hulu? I don't think Who so. Who knows? It's on something. It might be on Hulu. We'll watch it it's later. It's available. Hmm. It's a great movie. Yeah, yeah Sp- Spock has concerns about whether or not he should join the uh, Vulcan Bang bus. Which, to be fair, I mean, that's a legit concern. You know? Uh, but yeah. also, uh, Spock technically has a fiancé. Did she die on Vulcan? <gasps> Good question. Oh, shit. Wait, does <laughs> did Uhura he- know about his fiancé? They, no, it was, he was a fiance from childhood. That's what the way they do it. Crazy, oh, good sex right. things. <laughs> Notwithstanding, they were betrothed. 
Uh, if I were a real nerd, I'd remember the exact language that they would use when they see each other again, but yeah. I don't because I'm a failure. You are. Fake Fuck geek you. girl. Fake geek girl. I That's know, what you are. I know. Listen, I know her name's to Pring. Uh, I know she brings another dude over to the ceremony. Yeah, she does. <laughs> uh, and I had this whole theory about how uh, Kirk and Spock had symbolic sex during that episode. Okay, that's what that's everybody's theory is. It's not original, Pip. Go home. You're drunk. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, wrap up a little tiny bit here. Um, so, if we had to vote on one treatment, if we had to vote on one plot, would we vote on any, like, mm. who do you think would be the one we'd want to see in theaters and or... Is there a version that we'd want to make out of all of ours? Well, I think mine can work as a separate movie than what you guys are doing. <laughs> so you want to be the, the, the follow-up? Yeah. <laughs> I think that mine, I think mine, yeah. the feeling oh. of mine should infuse something of what you guys are doing. I accept that, <laughs> I accept that the Klingon well, plot is perhaps one that is not the popular favorite. <laughs> well, that's the thing. If we somehow tied in I, I, I'm kind of a fan of fusing ideas mm. together because that's partly what a collaborative storytelling what? effort is supposed what? to be is taking the good yeah, elements, yeah, yeah. right? So, you know, again, I like, you know, Pip's elements of actually having more interpersonal drama and we can actually maybe do some more references to perhaps one of the Klingon episodes. I forget where, like, which particular episodes the Klingons show up in, uh, you know, the tribal tribbles, tribbles and all that. Captain uh, Koloff was in that one. I looked it up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah d- but we can have, yeah. like, a su- we can have some reference to that, you know, maybe Tribbles. Oh, God, no, no, not for a movie. I was like, oh, if Tribbles could play a key element. I was thinking um, how fun, much fun a Naked Time movie would be, even though it would never work. No. <laughs> no. But I'm thinking, the thing is, I, I kind of like the ideological differences mm. between the Federation and the Klingon mm-hmm. Empire. And again, if... If the movie execs are really wanting to have like, okay, we need to have some solid grounding with prior IP in order to guarantee revenue, whatever, we, we gotta have a reference to one of the other successful movies and we gotta have Khan and Space mm-hmm. Seed for reasons. Then we can maybe mix in uh, some of the other elements that Al and I brought in where it's like, you know, the false flag war with, uh, with the Klingon Empire. Man, I lost my train of thought. No. Uh, so we mix in the, uh, help me out here. Uh, uh the, the, oh, oh yeah, we can mix in, uh, Al's plot of having this kind of, I, 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 I'm, I'm sticking with that, you know, Hydra operatives <laughs> storyline. Cause I think that's kind of cool, mm-hmm. but I'm liking, uh, I still have it stuck in my head having the Admiral be the, defense head of Starfleet and that. it's all oh, one yeah. big yeah. power play on his part. I mean, heck, the if we have to have the Botany Bay people, they're pushing him in that direction cuz what's easier to take over uh, as far as, you know, their overall plans. They've realized that it's not about taking over Earth anymore. It's about taking over the freaking galaxy. Exactly. And that's part of wouldn't space it be, seed. Well, yeah. Yeah. And wouldn't it be easier if he had a highly militarized, more fascist uh, Starfleet and Federation, and then maybe a few years down the line, Khan takes over and boom, you have, you know, more or less mirror, mirror universe Starfleet is the attempt happening. You try to make the mirror, mirror. I love that. Pip, you might know this. Um, were they long lived as well, or were they just? Uh, uh... To the best of my knowledge, they don't mention uh, okay. a lifespan. Though I think it can be assumed that it's longer because they are. Genetic- I think like peak human. Yeah, they're peak human, genetically superior in every way. Khan can lift Kirk with one arm, that sort of thing. Okay, so that I mean, so it's in their benef- It's in their best interest to play the long game. Yeah, um, and they yeah. have and they have the wherewithal, wherewithal and intelligence to do so. All right, cool. Uh, so I think the winner for me out of all of this is honestly Bren's change to making a uh, to defense. defense. Yeah, that. Yeah, I think that that's such the power play in space. Yeah, I think that that's such a key change, and it's also one that is really approachable. 
You know, it's yeah. it's not without having to rewrite the entire script, although obviously you would. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the, at, to that point, we could potentially drop the Benedict Cumberbatch uh, uh, segment there and just have it in favor of this mm-hmm. more political military intrigue story that Al was pushing. Yeah, yeah. So, because okay. I don't know, for, for me at least, a bigger story drive is what's driving the characters. Yes, and then a lot can a lot can fall down from that. You know, it can help you make stories that make sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't make sense to just have uh Khan in the original movie do a lot of what he does just yeah. for the yucks. Like, oh, why don't you open up one of those torpedoes no, 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 and no. find out? It's like, well, why don't you just tell us? You could have saved us an hour of time. Come <laughs> on, man. Yeah, he could have paid the emotional card right there. And had them on their and side. it would have worked. That would have been keeping him more with both of them, both more with Starfleet and more with uh, uh, the eugenics people, you know, using the emotional thing. And then Starfleet being like, well, of course we'll unfreeze your people. What? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, I mean. That makes sense. We're not monsters. Womp womp. We were cruelly frozen back in the day. For what? Nothing. So. <laughs> <laughs> no reason. Stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Why were we frozen? <laughs> uh, it was a really warm you don't have day. To have a story. To cool <laughs> you, you don't happen to have a historian on board, do you? No. No. Excellent. Awesome. And then that would have been a that would have been a great use for Spock Prime, as opposed to what he actually was, which was the guy who had the script. Yeah. Hmm. By the way, Wrath of Khan was a movie. You should watch it, kids. <laughs> just FYI, just putting that out there. Yeah, right. It's much better than what what's going on here. <laughs> Peace. All right. Back to the bag bus. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> that's how that, that's that's how Volk or Spock Prime I acts. Is. <laughs> that's what Spock. That's what he's doing with all his time. He's just like fucking everywhere. Just like oh, it's like oh, Unity yeah. where uh, when when Pierce leaves this mortal realm, he's left a a a, a, a gallon of sperm for everybody in the study group. That's just like what he's. Yeah. <laughs> And for Kirk, a vial of sperm. <laughs> he knows <Nope>. why. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, also, ah. I, I, I nearly forgot. I threatened back when we started talking about this that yep. my immediate suggestion for every story would to be would be to make it more queer. Go. This movie is begging for it. I agree, so to speak. <laughs> I, I seem to recall you saying there was a polyamorous relationship or oh, something yeah, going totally. on. Between uh, Spock, Uhura, Kirk, Bones, and yeah, the four of them, right? Mm-hmm. Where mostly it's... Scotty sometimes. <laughs> Scotty sometimes, you know, for a lark, but he's not actually part of the relationship. I feel like Scotty's busy with Keener and just watches from the side. <laughs> Don't judge him. But no, it's mostly Spock and Uhura and Kirk and Bones, but KG Kirk goes and hangs out with Spock and Uhura, and Spock goes ha- hangs out with... Uh, hangs out being a euphemism, uh, with, Bones. uh, Kirk and Bones. Uh, and when it's just Kirk and Spock off, <laughs> Bones and Uhura drink and gossip about their boyfriends. <laughs> I think that's. Like, they're the ones hmm. not actually, uh, involved in that way, but they're very, very close friends. I think that's the real movie. I think, and it's the friends we made along the way. That we slept with. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, it's a brave new world. <laughs> new frontiers. <laughs> yeah. So I, I guess we can start uh, wrapping this up. Yeah. So that was uh, Star Trek Into Darkness and our random story treatments for it. Uh, our extremely well-informed story treatments. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, we, we did our homework. Uh, we didn't just use this as, as an excuse to watch no. a movie over the weekend. <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, listeners, as always, if you have a story to submit, head on over to nostoryissecret.com slash submission. You can follow us on Twitter at nostoryissecret or send an email through contact at nostoryissecret.com. Yeah, pitch us something on Twitter. And we'll make up a story for it. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> and as you've seen tonight, we can just go in all sorts of directions. About four of them. <laughs> Uh, editing for this episode is done by me, Brendan, and the transcript and show notes will be available on the website at nostoryasacred.com. 
Thanks for listening, everyone, and see you next time when Kat will use a random troops generator to come up with a plot, and then we're going to take apart the results. Until then, where no story is sacred, and any story can be changed. And I think we've proved that tonight. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> this was Brendan. This was Kat. This was Pippin. And this was Alex. And we're... No, no story, story is sacred. sacred. <laughs>